And welcome back to Capital Talk on the road all this week from the city once known as Le Petit Paris, Abidjan. And the theme of the week, as you all know, Africa's movers and shakers, like the young lady on the bench today, Ethiopian no less, her job to bridge the digital divide. Tough task, as Sophia Bekela says, she's up to the challenge. So, tough tough challenge, Sophia, you know that. It, working in Africa, it's not going to be easy. Huh? I mean, don't expect to walk into country after country and they embrace you. They're going to fight you, if anything, for the sake of it. Well, that's an interesting challenge, Jeff, because uh, I'm used to the fight. Uh, my company, my private company in California, CBS International, has been in the business of uh, transferring technology for years. And Africa has been a, uh, not an easy market, but we've come back, we've come back. We have learned the psyche uh, of uh, the African uh, people. So it's not really new to us. So the fighting spirit is something that's, that's within me and, and the people I put behind. Uh, we need a strong team, obviously, and it's a content of our project. Um, so uh, I don't think Bridging the digital divide is such a hard task in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> very optimistic. We are very, very much ready for it. You are? Yes. Okay. When you first went to America, and to Silicon Valley for that matter, did you think, did you ever say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to take, I'm going to transfer everything that I've learned, all this technology, I'm going to take it back to Africa one day. Was that the sole purpose? Was that one of your goals and ambitions? To be honest with you, I'm too young to have uh, thought of that. But uh, once I have actually set up CBS International and uh, have decided to say Africa needs a technology, I've taken a one-year break after my career and gone around the world to see what the other um, continents do, Asia as well as Latin America and so forth. So Africa was the next step. And then when I went there, I see that how satellite, probably, particularly six years ago, how satellite and internet could change the whole um, ecosystem for Africa and now we have the internet particularly if not satellites and we have the wireless and all the new technologies and even social media which is a big part of uh, what we're doing domain names um, which is transforming uh, the continent uh, all we need is a is infrastructure based broadband broadband is what we need and I think the policymakers uh, Connect Africa Summit, which was done in 2007 by ITU, raised the biggest awareness for leadership, uh, government uh, heads of state level, to understand what broadband can do to the society. It's part of like any infrastructure, like water and power and so forth. So we need to look at internet as a commodity, so that people, that is just besides the point. What we need is to build content, actually. Africa should be thinking about what content we should put on the internet, so that not only to empower the city, which is, has the highest internet penetration, we need to empower the rural areas. So therefore, the base is the broadband. When we talk about in internet infrastructure, we need to talk about broadband. Don't, Africa domain cannot succeed without broadband availability in the countries. So the youth have understood it, but the leadership is now beginning to understand. Look what happened, I think, in Zimbabwe first uh, also country in the south to actually launch a big broadband initiative. So I think uh, we're progressing. Uh, I see the next three, four years Africa having broadband as a commodity. But how many people at the end of the day are on the internet, are users on the internet in Africa? Because look, nearly a billion people, 1%, less than 1%? Yeah, but you, the same occurs in the USA. So I mean, uh, there is... Uh, uh, there is a broadband initiative by uh, President Obama now, for example. Why? Because he's trying to penetrate the areas that are not touched. So there's always going to be that contrast. So we're not looking at the half glass, um, half, uh, uh, how do you say? The glass being half empty. Half empty. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. Uh, but we're looking at the glass being full. So half. when we look half full. So when we look at that, then we look at the broadband uh, initiatives being uh, taken everywhere in Africa and looking for positive results and what we can do to build uh, content and applications on it to empower the community and the people. At the end of the day, how is it going to change lives? Well, information is part of uh, a civil society. It's part of uh, development. Uh, so how do you, if you don't have information and knowledge, people don't tend to develop. 
the narrower, look at the countries that don't have internet access properly. The people's vision, creativity, and everything is stifled as a result of lack thereof. So when we're looking at information as a, a powerful tool to build a continent, a nation, then we need broadband. Otherwise, we're going to be very isolated. And that's why we talk about Africa being um, you know, part of the uh, digital village. Every time when we talk about that is, what does that mean? We need broadband, we need content, we need information. We need to have uh, African-based uh, products and services develop. And how that happens is by seeing what other people have developed in their continents and countries, and then coming up here and saying, how can Africa do it its own way? So those are the important points to make and without broadband I don't think that's any nation can develop right now yeah. internet access what about financial injection are you gonna need money to, to do this obviously you know you're gonna need some kind of capital yes this is uh, the governance model as I again uh, as I mentioned is more of a nonprofit and then we're gonna outsource the registry so when the registry come in in fact we expect to launch and make money right away. But until the license is issued to us, which is next year, we try to use sponsorship from businesses and active uh, internet uh, uh, entities within Africa. It could be NGOs or foundations to actually assist in uh, uh, injection of capital for us. And would you expect um, links like google.com to one day become google.africa, for, for instance? Of course, uh, in every African entity, especially big businesses, need to reserve their own names. In fact, Google.Africa, all the intellectual uh, property names need to be reserved so that somebody else cannot purchase it and sort of hijack the company saying, you know, this is who we are. Because uh, you understand these are some of the security issues and stuff that I mentioned earlier that needs to be addressed. So we have, when we launch, before we launch Africa, in fact, we'll have a sunrise period period where we actually will give opportunities for uh, premium names as it's called google.com or microsoft.africa uh, so they will be able for them to register and secure their um, domains. As an African, as a Kenyan say, what will be the biggest advantage to me for having the .africa domain? Well, first I would say it identifies you as an African entity, right? You're talking about maybe your show or your personal, which one is that? It doesn't matter, it's, uh, yes, African identity. And if you are trying to uh, penetrate the rest of the market outside from Kenya, for example, it improves regional integration, your presence is seen by everyone. What you're saying to African, um, uh, to your business partners is, we are doing, we are Pan-African. We are not just a Kenyan entity or an Ethiopian entity or a South African entity. So it builds your brand as a continental brand, one. And second, the other thing is that, you know, you're a Pan-African. All the registrations, 90% of the registrations now, which is .com, goes to an American or uh, Western-based businesses. So when you think of Africa, you want to bring the registration monies back to, um, to the continent, right? So it fights capital flight in that sense, which is good business. And so once uh, we get that, we also actually plan to use the proceeds of the monies we get to champion other projects that need capacity building. Could be ISPs, could be other smaller uh, domains trying to register within the continent using their own languages and so forth. There are many, many other um, things that would come out of the domain outside of just the continental domain, subsidiary benefits. So we will sponsor that and, and fund that. So this is really the vision of Dot Connect Africa. And for you personally, Sophia, how, how long will you keep doing this? Let's say you run into a couple of barriers, a couple of roadblocks along the way. Will that put you off? Will that frustrate you? Will that t t tell you, you know what, I'm better off in Silicon Valley? <laughs> Many times. I have said that beginning and it's something con continuously you say, but it's, it gives you the strength. It's Africa. So Africa is home. You have to build it. Silicon Valley, it's been done. Somebody's taking care of it, but who's going to take care of Africa? So people like us who've been educated in the field need to go back and contribute. Yes, there are setbacks uh, a lot, but you know, people, you count on people, the people around you, hopefully good people around you, and so you move on. You know, you stop and get up, and, and that's how life is. Bottom line, there are a lot of people who are in IT watching you right now. They want to see how can they jump on this bandwagon right away and you know, make some money along the way and be a part of it, uh, bridging that divide. Yes. Well, that's a good question. We want 
first of all, you know, the support is very good. We want them to be excited, but to be part of the money making and to be part of the uh, the whole initiative is uh, sponsorship, as I said, for the big businesses. And what that means, it, it has its own uh, different values. Um, they will be part of the development of a new industry because we are developing a really new industry of registering domains which brings in the sales aspect of it, registrars, that's what it's called. So anybody can sell a .africa domain, it's not restricted to someone in the industry. So in a sense, people could be registrars, setting up themselves as registrars and making money from, from the sales aspect of it, like a resellers. Like anybody in America could be a reseller, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, so we're really building a continental oil industry uh, based on domain names. We're building applications on domains. We're building, there's the security aspect of domain names, which security firms, existing security firms could consult and, and be part of. So uh, I think we're very excited to bring a, a whole industry to the continent. And it allows for the economics of getting jobs and creating new initiatives out of this. And uh, it has a rippling effect Put of uh, progress. Mm -hmm. You were saying that three, four years from now, Africa will have, the landscape will have changed tremendously. Yes. Throw us down the line, five, ten years, how will Africa look if all things being equal? Yes, uh, well, as I said, the cable, uh, the fiber, that will really change the way information, uh, the way pe people view things, the way people access information. That's going to change every industry in Africa in terms of going global, going regional and uh, making connections, the communication system and so forth. The social media is something that's going to come no matter what, so the youth will be more empowered. Now the youth has to go to university, the youth has to develop a specialized project in their own homes to be part of the information society. Now social media like Facebook, Twitter and all the others are going to be like online, so it's more cloud computing will be something that Africa is going to embrace just like the mobiles. We've embraced the mobiles more than the infrastructure telephony system. So cloud comp computing is the idea of having everything on uh, someone else's server, which is the Yahoo's and the Google's. And so applications will be more built on uh, the internet. So people will start accessing everything online directly on the server. So that creates that internet society. And what that means is we more a bother about securing the internet instead of actually worrying about um, you know uh, not having internet uh, at all so uh, this is this is where I see the next next thing happening so yeah. capital talk will one day be capital talk dot Africa anytime thank you reserve your name <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it right now <laughs> not just a pretty face huh <laughs> Sophia Bikelli good grief what a week it's been on the bench in Abidjan we are bringing on the continent's movers and shakers. And like Sophia Bekela here, she wants to bridge that digital divide one country at a time. What a guest, what a show. What a week it's turning out to be on the bench. You simply cannot find these kinds of guests anywhere else but right here on the bench on the award-winning station, K24, soon to be Dot Africa, where we are. Even though we're in Abidjan, all Kenyan. All the time. <laughs> Good job. <laughs>